which angle is not right angled now we need to know what a right angle looks like and I think that we are going to have a bit of information about a right angle so let us use our angle cycle to remind us what a right angle looks like we will also be reminded of the size of the right angle in degrees so we are going to see what it looks like and we are going to be reminded of the size here is our angle cycle we are starting at zero degree and our first stop is at 90 degrees and that angle is a right angle notice all the angle like this that okay so that is 90 degrees and that is a right angle so the question is which angle is not right angled so which of the angles is not like the right angle the 90 degrees angle shown on the left what about that one T P R T P R now is this angle in size the same as this one of course it is TPR is identical to the right angle shown on the left what about SRP and do not forget we are looking at the one that is not right angled so SRP S R P look at this one does this seem to be the same size as this one sure it is SRP is also identical to it to the right angle so that's not the one we are looking for what about this one T P Q T P Q is this angle the same in size as this one you can tell me T P Q is not identical to it TPQ is not a right angle and the correct answer is therefore option C there we have it option C although we have found our answer let us finish up by confirming that RST is also a right angle RST R S T is that a right angle sure it is so it is identical to our angle on the left and is therefore a right angle which line is perpendicular to PR hmm perpendicular what does perpendicular mean Jerry yes right Jerry is saying that the perpendicular means the same as a right angle and it is the same as 90 degrees okay so we are saying which line is perpendicular to PR or we are saying which line is 90 degrees to PR okay another way to ask the question could be which line is at a right angle to PR so let us see what PR looks like to find the line that is perpendicular to PR we need to find the line that is right angle or 90 degrees to PR let us use our angle cycle to remind us what a right angle looks like so that is our right angle which is a 90 degrees angle let us highlight our reference line which is what PR and examine the positions of the other lines relative to it so there is PR we have PR this big bold line that you cannot miss that is PR now we are going to see which line is perpendicular to PR so we are asking the question is PQ so let us show PQ right there does this angle seem to be the same as this one in size I don't think so therefore the angle formed with PQ and PR is not identical to the one on the left P 
PQ is not perpendicular to PR. And because it's not perpendicular, it's not the correct answer. What about the other one? QR. What about QR? So this is PR and this is QR. Is this angle that is formed with PR and QR right angle, is it the same size as this angle? No. QR does not form a right angle or a 90 degrees angle with PR. It is therefore not perpendicular to PR. What about ST? This is PR, this is ST or TS. It is the same line segment. ST does not even form an angle with PR. It therefore cannot be perpendicular to it. So this one does not form an angle with this line. As a matter of fact, these two lines are what we call parallel. That we'll take a good look at in another problem. So, of course, PR is not perpendicular to ST. What about that one? PT. We have PT right here. Is this line perpendicular to this? Is this line 90 degrees to this? Is this line forming an angle that is equal to this one? Sure it is. PT forms an angle with PR that is identical to the one on the right. It is the one that is perpendicular or right angled to. So the correct answer is option D. A boy received X dollars from his father. His father took another Y dollars from his brother and gave it to him. Which statement represents the total amount of money that the boy received? As explained on a previous slide, when we multiply quantities, we square the units also. What will happen if we multiply X dollars by Y dollars? X and Y will be multiplied by each other and the dollars will be multiplied by each other. So we have dollars multiplied by dollars and that is equal to dollars to the power of 2 to the second power or dollars squared. Since dollars squared has no use, we are sure that option A cannot be correct. So we are sure that we cannot multiply X dollars by Y dollars. That is going to be outrageous. And what do you have to say about that, Jerry Lewis? Okay, Jerry Lewis is agreeing with me. He does not want to contradict me much. Okay, yes, he's saying that he will not have to contradict me if I am correct. So, we do not multiply dollars by dollars. The quantity will have no use at all. So we are sure that option A cannot be correct. Notice that Y dollars was not taken from him. Instead, it was given to him. So what do we notice? His father took another Y dollars from his brother, did not take it from him. He took it from his brother and gave it to him. Right? So it was not taken from him at all. It was taken from his brother and given to him. Therefore, the amount of money that he received is X plus Y. And this is represented by option B. For option C, what do we notice? That that option, which is this one, shows a reduction instead of an increase and cannot be correct. Option D is another of those wild answers that cannot be correct. So we don't divide money. When we give somebody an amount of money and we give him another amount, we don't divide the two amounts. I don't think that any student would choose this answer. The diagram below shows the number of calories consumed by a mouse on certain days. What is the angle that represents its consumption on Tuesday? Let us consult the angle cycle 
in order to determine the region in which the angle representing Tuesday will fall. So there we have labeled the acute region and of course that acute region begins at 0 degree and ends at 90 degrees. And of course we are looking at this angle Tuesday. What do we notice? Which angle is bigger? Is this one bigger than this one or is this one bigger than this one? Okay. Now we are looking at the obtuse region. The obtuse region is the region between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now look at the angle that represents Tuesday. Now this angle that represents Tuesday, notice that the angle is greater than 90 degrees, which is a right angle, and less than 180 degrees. So because this angle is greater than 90 and less than 180, we are sure that the angle is in the obtuse region. Therefore, the angle is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. Therefore, the angle that is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees is our angle of choice. 120 degrees is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees and represents our correct answer. The answer is option B. So although we did not measure the angle, we are using our angle cycle to determine the region in which the angle would fall. So for argument's sake, this angle is in the acute region. And it seems to be less than the 60 degrees angle that we have here. The only choice of angle that we could use would be 30 degrees. So this angle being more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. The only choice here that is greater than 90 and less than 180 is 120 degrees. So that has to be our correct answer. Which of the following can a triangle have? Can a triangle have two obtuse angles? Well, the key to solving this problem is the knowledge that the angles in any triangle must add to give 180 degrees. So take a look at option A. Two obtuse angles. An obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. The sum of two obtuse angles will be greater than 2 times 90 degrees. The sum will therefore be greater than 180 degrees. A triangle cannot have two obtuse angles because the angles in a triangle cannot be more than 180 degrees. Right? Therefore, a triangle cannot have two obtuse angles. Only two angles of 60 degrees. We're going to be looking at option B. If two angles of a triangle are equal to 60 degrees, what will the other one be? So that's a good question for option B. If two angles of a triangle are equal to 60 degrees, what will the other one be? So 2 multiplied by 60 is equal to 120 degrees. Since the angles of a triangle are to give 180 degrees, to find the other one, we need to subtract 120 degrees from 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 120 degrees is equal to 60 degrees. We have seen that if a triangle has two angles of 60 degrees, then the remaining one will also be 60 degrees. A triangle cannot have only two angles of 60 degrees. Explain that to me now, Jerry Lewis. Tell me how comes a triangle cannot have only two angles of 60 degrees. Okay, let me take the first statement. Make your first statement. 
Okay, so he's saying that the two angles that we'll have right here, two angles of 60 degrees each, so that will be 120 degrees. Okay, okay, 120 degrees that, Jerry. Move on. Okay, so then the angles in a triangle equal to 180. So you're going to take the 120 from the 180 and you'll get 60. And what else now? Okay, so he's saying that the third and final angle will be 60 degrees and the other two are equal to 60 degrees. Therefore, a triangle cannot have two angles of 60 degrees each. Option C now. A right angle is equal to 90 degrees. What will be the size of the three of them? So, option C is saying that can a triangle has three right angles? So, a right angle is equal to 90 degrees. What will be the size of three of them? Three times 90 is 270. The total of all of the angles in a triangle cannot be greater than 180 degrees. So when we have 270 here, it is impossible for a triangle to have three right angles. Option D. The triangle that we took a look at in option B, the one that we took a look at here, had three angles each of 60 degrees. Therefore, that triangle had no angle equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because it has three angles of 60 degrees each. It therefore did not have a right angle. Therefore, a triangle can exist without having a right angle. Well, there's a special name to a triangle that has a right angle. It is called a right angled triangle. But there are countless number of other triangles that do not have right angle. So, option D a triangle can exist without having any right angle. Option D is correct. Any triangle that has a right angle is called a right angled triangle. This means that it has one angle that is equal to 90 degrees. As pointed out before, triangles may exist without having a right angle. Among the countless triangles that exist without a right angle, some special cases are acute angle triangles, obtuse angle triangles, and equilateral triangles. An acute angle triangle has all of its angles less than 90 degrees. It gets its name from the fact that an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle triangle has one angle greater than 90 degrees. The sum of the other two angles will have to be less than 90 degrees. With one angle greater than 90 degrees and the other two less than 90 degrees each, there is no right angle in an obtuse angle triangle. All of the angles in an equilateral triangle are equal to 60 degrees. No problem seeing that it has no angle equal to 90 degrees. The relationship between lines EF and GH can best be described as, and we have parallel, oblique, perpendicular, horizontal. Let's see. There we have them. So we are putting them in gold, so you cannot miss them. And we are talking about the lines EF and GH. The lines are parallel because parallel is a term that is used to describe straight lines that travel in the same direction and will never meet. Option A is therefore correct. So that's your correct answer. Of course they are parallel. Lines that are oblique are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Remember that perpendicular lines meet at right angles or 90 degrees. The word horizontal is not used to describe the relationship between lines, but the position of a single line. 
So that horizontal is not to describe the relationship between two lines, but describe the position of a single line. The lines EF and GH seem to be somewhat bent at the middle. Notice right here, it seems as if they kind of bulge a little bit. Probably not. It probably is not so obvious. But it surely appears like that to me. So, they appear to be somewhat bent at the middle, even though they are straight lines. This is an optical illusion that students need to be familiar with. So, let's draw two parallel lines that students can see that they are actually parallel. So, what about those two lines? They are parallel? Well, they surely look parallel to me. I don't see anything about them that does not look parallel. They surely look like straight lines and they surely look parallel to each other. So let us introduce a special set of lines into the picture and see what will happen to the appearance of the lines that are parallel and straight. So those two lines, they are parallel and they are straight. Now we are going to do something to them. See that? By introducing this special set of lines, they seem to be like narrow at the two ends and seem to be a little bit wider at the center. And of course, we can go back. See, they look parallel and they look straight. Look at this now. Right, so it gives them an appearance as if they are a little bit curved. And that is an optical illusion that students should be aware of. We have shown that things are not always what they seem. The lines are still straight and parallel. The other lines cause them to appear bent in the middle. And Jerry Lewis is in Wonderland. He cannot believe that just by introducing a set of lines, that the straight lines can appear bent. Yes, Jerry. Things will have their particular appearance. But when you put a background, or my, one of my little brothers would say, a foreground to the image, it causes it to look a lot different. The line AB may be best described as, where is that line AB? There it is. The line AB may best be described as, so we are putting up a system that we are going to use to help us describe the appearance of a line. A line that goes from north to south as shown by the cardinal direction is vertical. Let's look at that. Right, so if it goes like this, that line is vertical. Which line matches with that? Okay, that line matches perfectly with AB. The line AB is vertical. Option B is correct. Vertical. To identify a horizontal line, consider the line that marks where the sky and the sea appear to meet. That line is called the horizon and is similar to the word horizontal. So horizon and horizontal are related words. And you can take a look at that to see if a line is horizontal. So this line, CD, is horizontal. Lines that are neither vertical nor horizontal are described as oblique. Which angle measures more than 180 but less than 360? What is the name of that angle? So let us use our angle cycle to remind us of the sizes of the different types of angles. So here's our first one. Acute region. So here, any angle that falls in this region is called an acute angle. Any angle that looks like this is called a right angle. So between 0 and 90, we have the the acute region and the angle 90 degrees angle is called a right angle any angle that is between 0 degree and 90 degrees is an acute angle and 90 degrees angle is a 
right angle. So let's move merrily along. Any angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees is obtuse. So any angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees is obtuse. And any angle that is in the region between 180 degrees and 360 degrees is reflex. The correct answer is option B. Option B. Reflex. Because it is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Start here. First encounter the acute region and then right angle or 90 degrees angle continuing we get into the obtuse region then we have angle on a straight line 180 degrees and if we continue from 180 degrees all the way around to 360 degrees the region here is called reflex so any angle that is in the region between 180 degrees and 360 degrees is reflex which shape represents a rectangular pyramid? What is a pyramid? A pyramid is a three-dimensional figure with a base and whose other sides have a common vertex. So, like this one has a base and the other sides meet at a point. So, the, where they meet at a point, that point is called a vertex. A pyramid is given name according to the shape of its base. So here we have one with a triangular base and that is called a triangular pyramid. And of course we have one with a rectangular base and it is called a rectangular pyramid. And this one called a circular pyramid or a cone. So all of these are pyramids but they are given name according to the shape of their bases. The shape that represents a rectangular pyramid is A. So notice that the rectangle for the base and, of course, the rectangle for the base. So A is a rectangular pyramid and that is our correct answer. In the right angle triangle, the angle Q is equal to 25 degrees. What is the size of the angle R? All the angles of a triangle add to give 180 degrees. In a right angle triangle, the size of the right angle is 90 degrees. Let us take the size of the right angle from 180 degrees. What is the purpose of taking 90 degrees or the right angle from 180 degrees, Jerry. Very good. Jerry has stated that by taking out the 90 degrees from the entire angles in the triangle, we will get the size of the other two angles. So let us take out the 90 degrees. If we take out the 90 degrees from the 180, we get 90 degrees. So 90 degrees will be the size of the other two angles combined. So if after taking out 90 degrees, the result is 90 degrees, this means that the two remaining angles should add to give 90 degrees. One of the angles is R. And by the way, Jerry is giving me some very good explanation. As soon as I get the information from Jerry, I will pass it on to all of the students because when Jerry explains something, it is very clear. So, one of the angles is R, the one whose size we do not know. The other one is Q, whose size is 25 degrees. R plus 25 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. So, 25 degrees is added on the left hand side because we are just solving a simple equation where R plus 25 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. So, R plus 25 degrees is equal to 90 degrees because we are adding 25 degrees on the left hand side 
we are going to transpose this 25 degrees to the other side in order to find the value of r and it is done by doing the opposite of what we have here on the left hand side which is plus 25 degrees so we minus 25 degrees from the right hand side so r is equal to 65 degrees the answer is option a all the angles of a triangle are to give 180 degrees in a right angle triangle the size of the right angle is 90 degrees in this approach we will add the known angles and subtract the sum from 180 degrees the right angle is 90 degrees and the other known angle is 25 degrees so we are going to add those two angles and we get 115 degrees the total may now be subtracted from 180 degrees so R is equal to 180 degrees minus 115 degrees so R is equal to 65 degrees the answer is option A what type of triangle has no sides measuring the same so what triangle has no sides measuring the same now we are going to be taking a look at option A a scalene triangle has no pair of equal sides because of this it has no pair of equal angles the correct answer is option A a scalene triangle no pair of equal sides no pair of equal angles option B now a right angle triangle has one side that is equal to 90 degrees so although we have found our correct answer we are still discussing the other options no Jerry we cannot approach life like that if there is another question then the student should be fully aware of what a right angle triangle is an equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle is and I'm trying to cause the mathematics resources to supply information okay good all right so a right angle triangle has one side that is equal to 90 degrees although a right angle triangle may also be scalene there are right angle triangles that are isosceles one such right angle isosceles triangle may be found in the set of mathematical instruments so in the set of mathematical instruments you have one right angled isosceles triangle option C now what about equilateral an equilateral triangle has all sides equal because of this all angles are also equal the angles of a triangle are to give 180 degrees all of them are equal in size to each other therefore each one will be what 180 degrees to be divided by 3 so each angle of an equilateral triangle is equal to 60 degrees option D an isosceles triangle has at least two sides that are equal because of this at least two angles are also equal all sides of an equilateral triangle are equal therefore an equilateral triangle is also an isosceles triangle you cannot have three sides equal unless two of them are already equal therefore an equilateral triangle must first be isosceles however an isosceles triangle is not necessarily equilateral which can be an example of a sphere a sphere is a round solid with all points on its surface equal in distance from its center consequently a globe viewed from any angle will appear to be circular so because of that a globe is a sphere 
because a sphere appears circular irrespective of what angle you look at it from. Option A. A conflicts box is in the shape of a rectangular prism. It does not appear to be circular from any angle. This option is not correct. So, cannot be correct. It has to look circular from all angles for it to be a sphere. That is your conflicts that is your conflicts box and it is a regular prism. Option B, a tissue roll. A tissue roll is in the shape of a cylinder or a circular prism. There are angles from which it will appear circular, but it will not appear circular from every angle. So if you take a tissue roll that looks like this, it will appear circular if you look at one end and if you look at another end. But if you look right down the middle like that, it's not going to be circular. So it cannot be a sphere. It is a cylinder or it is cylindrical in shape. We also call it a circular prism. Option C, we are looking at a globe now. A globe is a map of the world. It will appear to be round irrespective of the angle from which it is viewed. This is the correct answer. Option D. A tent is in the shape of a pyramid. In the same way that pyramids may have circular, rectangular, or triangular bases, a tent may be a triangular pyramid, rectangular pyramid, or circular pyramid or cone. A tent will therefore not appear to be circular when it is viewed from all different angles. It is not spherical. That's a triangular pyramid, which is of course what a tent looks like, or it may look like a rectangular pyramid. And some people who are very innovative can cause it to look like a circular pyramid or cone. Which is an acute angle? We have done this a thousand times, but if it will help one more student to understand Although it is not necessary to consult our angle cycle in order to determine which angle is acute, I will consult it in order to clarify the types of angles in the incorrect options also. So I'm not just going to be looking at the correct option. I'm going to also be looking at the incorrect options. So there's your first part of the angle cycle, 90 degrees, right angle. And between the 0 and the 90 degrees, we have the acute region. So there we have it that a right angle is equal to 90 degrees. That's we have that. That's the information that we have. We see also that an angle that is between 0 degree and 90 degrees is an acute angle. It is in the acute region. The angle of 60 degrees is in that region. Option A is therefore our answer. More angles. If we continue between the 90 and the 180 degrees, what do we have? The angle 140 degrees is in the region between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. It is therefore in the obtuse region. It is therefore an obtuse angle. So the angle 140 degrees is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. It is therefore obtuse. The angle 250 degrees is in the region between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. It is therefore in the reflex region. It is therefore a reflex angle. Before attempting to solve the problem, let us be reminded of some facts about a parallelogram. So the problem that we are trying to solve is ABCD is a parallelogram. What is the size of the angle 
C. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in length. The line AD is equal in length to the line CD. There you have that. The line AD is equal in length to the line BC. Right. They are parallel and they are equal in length. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are also equal. So the angle at A and the angle at C are equal. The angles B and D are equal. Right, now we have enough facts to go on. The angles of any quadrilateral, any four-sided figure will add to give 360 degrees. But what? D and B are equal to 85 degrees each. So they are total. So these two, B and D, they are equal inside those angles that are opposite to each other. They are equal. So they, they are 85 degrees each. So the sum of these two angles will give 170 degrees. If we take that amount from 360, we will arrive at the sum of the other two angles. So these two are to give 170 degrees. If we take 170 from 360, we are going to get 190 degrees. Now 190 degrees will be what? The sum of these two. And of course, these two are the same in size. These two angles, opposite angles, are the same in size. So, the angles A and C are equal and their sum is the remainder after subtracting the sum of B and D from 360. The sum of B and D is therefore the difference of what? We obtain that from the last slide, 190 degrees obtained on the other slide. Since they are equal, each will be half of 190 degrees. What is that saying? That is saying now, in order to find the size of the angle C, we are going to take these two from 360 degrees. Angles in a quadrilateral will add to give 360 degrees. So we are taking those two angles, they are equal. We are taking them from 360 degrees. Therefore, when we took these from 360 degrees, the sum that we get is 190 degrees. But 190 degrees will be the sum of these two angles. These two angles are equal. So in order to find the size of this one, we divide 190 degrees by 2. So the answer will be the size of this one and it will also be the size of this one. But we want to know the size of the angle C. So C is equal to 95 degrees. The correct answer is option A. We may also use the fact that adjacent or consecutive angles of a parallelogram are to give 180 degrees. Therefore, in a parallelogram, this one with this one will give 180 degrees. If you add C with B, it gives 180 degrees. If you add B with A, it gives 180 degrees. As long as we have a parallelogram, that is true. So B plus C is 180 degrees. So C plus D is 180 degrees. So the value of D is 85. Therefore, the value of C is the rest of 180 degrees. To find the value of C, we subtract 85 degrees from 180 degrees. And we get C is equal to 95 degrees. In the diagram, lines CD and FB are parallel. Angle COG is 50 degrees. What is the size of angle OQD? 
So, let us emphasize the lines CD and FB. They are the parallel lines. So, we have the parallel lines. Those are the parallel lines. Right. Now, what else? The line GH is called a transversal to the system of parallel lines. It crosses the parallel lines. So, if you have a line that goes across the parallel lines, it is called a transversal. That is our transversal. The angle COG will be traced by our comet beginning at C and ending at G. The middle letter is O. Therefore, the angle will be located at the middle letter O. It is the angle that is equal to 50 degrees. So let us use our comet. There is our comet tracing out the angle. Right. And that is 50 degrees. So let's again, let us take a good look at it again with our comet tracing out the angle very nicely. 50 degrees. We now need the size of the angle OQB. Let us label it X. So that's it. O Q B. So that is labeled X. Angles that are arranged in a Z formation as we have them in the diagram above are called Z angles. The correct name for them is alternate angles. Alternate angles are equal, therefore X is equal to 50 degrees also. So Z, look at it, Z format. Right. So this angle is 50 degrees. This one must also be equal to 50 degrees. And of course, the setup requires that these two lines are parallel. The correct answer is option B. What type of diagram is this? Is it a pie chart? A pie chart shows the relative size of each item of data. It is also circular in shape. The diagram is an example of a pie chart. Option A is correct. What about the other options? Option B. A pictograph uses small pictures as units that represent a considerable number of each item of data. There we have it. A small picture representing a considerable number of each item of data. And what do we see there? In the pictograph on the right, each little church represents 20 churches. Option C. A bar graph uses vertical or horizontal bars to represent data. When comparing similar items of data, a bar graph may have one set of bars to represent the first item and another set of bars to represent the second item. The resulting diagram is called a double bar graph. Now, option D, a line graph makes use of a single usually unbroken line to show how one quantity changes relative to another. Line graphs are more often are not chronological. What does chronological mean? It's right there on the screen, Jerry. This means that it shows how a quantity changes relative to time. So a chronological bar chart will show how one data or one variable changes relative to time. The mean height of eight seedlings is seven centimeters. What is their total height? The mean is found by dividing the sum of the entries by the total number of entries. 
That's what we have there. Sum of entries over number of entries. In the particular case, we have the mean is 7 and we do not know the total height and the number of seedlings is 8. So the mean is equal to the total height over the number of them. The total height is being divided by 8 on the right hand side. We therefore need to do the opposite of dividing by 8 which is multiplied by 8 on the left hand side. So 7 centimeters multiplied by 8 is equal to the total height. So 56 centimeters is equal to the total height. And of course the total height is equal to 56 centimeters. So the correct answer is option D. Now we have our situation and we treat it as if we will treat any other equation and we are so familiar in solving equations in Richard James Mathematics Resources that this one should not be too much of a hassle. However, we may also argue that if by finding the mean we divide by the total number of entries, then we need to multiply the mean by the number of entries in order to find the total. So that is an easy argument. So we would multiply the mean by the total number of seedlings and we could have found our answer very easily. The pie chart shows the fast food preference of some campers. What fraction prefers pizza and hot dog? So what fraction prefers pizza and hot dog? What is the total percentage of pizza? And hot dog. How do we know that? Look for pizza and hot dog. Pizza is 20% and hot dog 30. So we're going to add those and that gives 50%. In any mathematical situation, the total is always represented by 100%. The fraction will be the total percentage of pizza and hot dog. That is the total of pizza and hot dog together divided by what? the entire percentage that is represented by the entire pizza and that is 100%. We know that there is a common factor of 50 in both numerator and denominator. So 50 into 50 is 1 and 50 into 100 is 2 times. So we have reduced that fraction to half. The correct answer is Option C. The table shows the time in minutes that students waited for lunch. How many students waited for more than three minutes for their lunch? The number of students who waited for more than three minutes for their lunch will be represented by the total of those that waited for four and five minutes. Okay, we have three minutes here. What are the times that are greater than 3 minutes? 4 minutes and 5 minutes. So we need to take a look at, th at those. 4 minutes and 5 minutes. So what about the number of students that waited for their lunches for 4 and 5 minutes? All we have to do is just add the 2. The total number of students indicated is 11 plus 5 which is equal to 16. The correct answer is option B. If we had several rows of the table below the one that contained 3 minutes, we could have found the total number of students who waited for more than 3 minutes by adding all of the number of students below the 3 minute line. The pie chart shows the quantity of vegetables that Mr. Brown sold last week which will give the size of the angle represented by lettuce. So that we have lettuce right there. The figures in the chart are given as percentages. We all should know that percentages are fractions out of 100. The fraction represented by lettuce will be 30 over 100.
Therefore, we need to make use of the total angle. The angular equivalent of one revolution is 360 degrees. That is one way all around. One time all around the pi. The sector represented by the lettuce will therefore be the fraction represented by the percentage multiplied by 360. So we have the fraction here that represents the percentage and we need to multiply by the number that represents the total angle. So that is the one. So our answer will be the one that looks exactly like that one. And which one is that? Option A. So the correct answer is option A.